everyone, and welcome to the Be Inspired series. My name is Julia Hoggart. I'm the CEO of the London Stock Exchange. Now, there are some great companies to celebrate in the UK, and we've had the absolute pleasure in this series of already celebrating a number of them. I'm utterly delighted to be joined by Andy Osmond, who's the CEO of Cambridge Mechatronics, to talk through what the company is doing and its vision for the future. Welcome to the London Stock Exchange, Andy. It's lovely Thank to you, have Julia. you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Now, Mechatronics, mm-hmm. that's a big name already, and a lot of uh, kind of what that means will go over people's heads. And it certainly went over mine until I read the briefings for this. Yes. But um, can we explain a little bit about what the technology is yes. and what Cambridge Mechatronics does yes. and a yeah. bit of its application, and then we can explore a bit more about the company? Yeah, sure. Well, let me just explain the name first of all, and yep. then I'll tell you what we do. So right. uh, Cambridge, we, we like the Cambridge brand. It's a good brand. It's recognised all over the world. We we, we operate all over the world. Mechatronics is a reflection of our mix of engineering skills. Mm -hmm. So we have mechanical engineers, we have electronics engineers, and we bring it all together in one name, so Cambridge Mechatronics. Um, So in terms of what we do, uh, we are um, uh, with the world leader in designing uh, and controlling uh, SMA actuators, and that will mean yeah. probably next to nothing to you. I was going to so say, there's, me... there's, there's an acronym and a word that we think we might need to unpack. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, so let's start with SMA. So mm-hmm. SMA stands for uh, Shape Memory Alloy. Right. Um, uh, so it's a metal alloy. Uh, we use it in the form of uh, a wire, um, and we use it to actuate things or to move things. Right. So actuators are miniature motors, uh, little devices that, that move other things. Right. Um, so our primary uh, application or the main application that we've really I- invested engineering uh, in uh, is in the field of smartphone cameras. Mm-hmm. Um, so we use the, the wire, the SMA wire, uh, to actuate or to move uh, the lens or the image sensor uh, ah. in the smartphone camera. So right. we attach the wire to the lens or the image sensor and we can then move it and and so we can focus the camera by moving the the lens in and out and we can also deliver uh, what we call ois or optical image stabilization mm-hmm. uh, which to the layperson is anti-shake right. uh, to, sh- to to take shake yep. and, and blur out of um, uh, pictures and, and and videos so we're improving the quality of uh, uh, smartphone cameras by using our sma uh, shape memory alloy uh, technology um, so is that one of the reasons why I could take better photos on my phone of the Northern Lights recently? I would <laughs> absolutely <laughs> expect that, Julia. I'm sure that's... The, but, but uh, you know, the, the camera in a smartphone... Mm-hmm. In fact, there are multiple cameras in smartphones, yep. um, generally four or five in, in every smartphone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a big uh, marketing tool for the smartphone uh, makers. Um, TikTok and social media, there's mm-hmm. such a lot of video sharing and photo sharing. Yep. Uh, the camera has become a really key integral part of uh, the smartphone. So, uh, yeah. um, so we have a very big market. Um, yep. The smartphone market is 1.2 billion units a year, and the smartphone camera market is is 5 billion units a year. Um, and that's never so going to get disaggregated now, is it? People no, no, are just no. used to having We're that just, sort of capability uh, in their pocket the whole time. That's right, and people want better and better mm. uh, quality uh, cameras. So yeah. the, the smartphone has become the, the new d- digital stills camera. People... Yeah. Very rarely these days carry a digital stills camera. You carry your smartphone and take your photos from that. But our technology, um, uh, actually, we have a platform technology with many, many potential applications Mm -hmm. uh, for the technology. Learning how to control this wire, which is very hard to uh, control. People have tried, many companies, big companies, Mm -hmm. have tried to control SMA before. Uh, And it's really our team of uh, clever Cambridge scientists that have worked out how to very precisely control um, SMA, and that's opened up um, a huge range of new potential applications um, for the technology. So let's explore that a bit. Can, can I explore two things? Mm, One is, sure. people have probably got a vision. I, I mean, when I first thought about it, I, th- I had this vision almost of a wire that you could see that was sort of moving things around. But these are very, very minute Very minute. Devices, so so yeah. the, the wire that we use is thinner than a human hair. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's almost invisible to, yeah. to, to the naked eye. Um, so, you know, we use a 25 micron wire. Um, it's incredibly thin, mm-hmm. takes up very, very little space. Yep. Um, and, you know, that means that in certain environments, such as the smartphone environment, where mm-hmm. space is really precious and, you know, people are trying to cram in as many different components in a very small um, available space, 
And having such a miniature, tiny uh, actuator is particularly useful in, yep. in, in that environment. This is one of the things I'm fascinated by. The more advanced manufacturing companies I go and visit, you think about sort of manufacturing and you think about product and warehouses and these forklift trucks carrying product around. Yeah. And you get to businesses like yours and you can fit the product on a table. Yes. And that's a yeah. large order. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can <laughs> get a lot of cameras yeah, on, I was gonna say, yeah. on, a, on a table. Yeah. So, so in terms of the, the sensitivity of this product and... Do you make the SMA device and then um, fit it into a particular kind of package or unit, or, or are you shipping out? In fact, actually, our business model has changed over the last 18 months because uh, up until about 18 months ago, um, we were a pure licensing business. Right. Uh, so we took license fees um, and, and royalties uh, and engineering fees. Um, and actually, we formed the view that we weren't extracting as much value mm. as we deserved from that particular business model. Um, and so what we've done is we've developed our own uh, chips, our right. own chips to sell to the market. Um, and our clever control algorithms, the, the, the software mm. uh, sits on the chips. So now the business model is that we, we still license. We license our designs. We have 800 um, uh, patents wow, wow. granted and uh, pending. That's huge. Um, so it's a big portfolio. Mm. We, th we think it's almost impossible for anyone else to work in smartphone cameras, at least, with SMA without infringing our IP. Right. Um, and we license that technology and we license it to manufacturing companies uh, in China and in Korea and all over the world mm -hmm. um, to allow them to make these miniature actuators those actuators then sold onto the camera module maker. Mm -hmm. The camera module maker then buys our chip, right. which controls the SMA wire. I see, right. And makes, assembles the camera, and then the camera itself is sold into the smartphone maker. Right. So, so, so you, you almost get at it from several angles in that we, regard. We get a revenue flow from the, um, the, the, the patents, the mechanical mm -hmm. patents, uh, from the actuator maker, and we get a revenue flow from the, uh, from, from the chips that we sell. Uh, that hold the other part of our IP, which is our com control knowledge. And we're starting to talk about uses. We talk about camera phones. Yes. And so, obviously, there's there's probably two major manufacturers now who yes. um, who dominate the smartphone market. Yes. But you've got billions of units every year that you could be in. Yes, correct. How do you yeah. and and lots of different applications? How do you think about the balance of scaling for you between the capacity to feed the markets that you're already into yeah. versus kind of being able to yeah. accelerate into other markets as well. Yeah, in the smartphone world, the supply chains that we use for the different customers um, are, are different. Yep. So in China, you know, we've shipped in just about all of the major Chinese handset um, uh, companies, and we have separate Chinese supply chains. Right. In Korea, you refer to the Korean and the American company. Yep. Uh, they have their own dedicated supply chains. Yep. There's some overlap, uh, but largely they're separate supply chains. Um, so for us to really penetrate the smartphone market in the way that we think the technology should be able to penetrate, <clears throat> we need to be able to work with um, those different supp supply chains right. uh, across geographies. So, so you're, you're having to operate across several, exactly. several strata. Exactly. And does that mean lots of different relationships to manage? Lots of different those? relationships to manage, mm -hmm. um, lots of involvement throughout the entire process from the actuator maker, making the actuators through to the smartphone maker. Yep. Um, uh, delivering the smartphone. So we, we're involved throughout the process, um, lots of relationships, um, and it means we, we have our own teams in the different uh, locations as well. Right. So we have a yep. big team in China, for example. Yep. So moving on to the, moving on other, to the uses, other use cases. Other uses. Um, as I said, they're almost countless. And so the big kind of challenge for us as a business um, is to invest in the right areas, not to try and spread ourselves yeah too thin yeah um, because you only, could do almost anything we could do almost anything yeah. we could do almost anything we're only 130 people mm -hmm. so it's a small company in terms of manpower um, uh, so the the areas that we're really interested in and we think there's really good opportunity um, in the short to medium term are in uh, medical devices mm -hmm. so we're developing uh, miniature uh, pumps uh, for pumping medicines in wow. the body yeah. and in particular a miniature uh, insulin pump and that's a that's an interesting uh, market and opportunity mm. because 
uh, next generation, well, first of all, people wear these little pumps on, yep. on their body. Yep. Um, and so you want them to be as small as possible and as lightweight as possible. Mm. And obviously our technology, because it's just a wire, it's, tiny. it's very yep. tiny. So yep. it means it's very small. So it means that there's more space in the pump. So you can either have a smaller pump or you could have the same size pump and it would last many days longer yep. than it does at the moment. Yep. So yep. both of which are obviously good for the, the people that are wearing them. Yeah. Um, and the other big development in, uh, in, in this world is um, people are developing next generation insulin, mm. um, which is far more concentrated. Right. And again, it saves a lot of space. But you've the got device. to calibrate delivery much more as you've a consequence. You've got to calibrate yeah. delivery. So the, the delivery becomes much more complicated, much more difficult. Um, and our technology is incredibly precise. The control mm. is incredibly precise. Sub-micron um, wow. control capability. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the combination of the small size and the very precise uh, control uh, makes it, we think, a, a really, a really good match for, for, for this particular market and application. And so we're working with um, a number of uh, uh, huge uh, medical device companies um, on, on that. That's a bit longer term than the smartphone opportunity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. here and now. But, but it illustrates the breadth. It of, illustrates of what those the, opportunities the breadth. Are. Uh, and then we, we have many others that, yeah. you know, we, we could be working on. We are working in the AR, VR glasses space right. because there are many, many potential applications yeah. um, in, in, in glasses and AR glasses and, yeah. and, and VR devices uh, for, for actuators. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when I can tell people that, yes, I'm old school and I've been wearing glasses forever rather than just because we're now all just seeing them in front of our face with <laughs> yeah. virtual reality. Exactly. But, uh, well, me too. <laughs> Now, you talked at the very beginning about the Cambridge name. Yes. Um, and obviously, everything you've already described is an illustration of the very high tech, but, but the constant evolution as well of yeah. the potential for this technology. And I always describe the UK as having a huge number of those really hard to get kind yeah. of attributes. It's yes. got remarkable yeah. research coming yes. out of universities. Actually, our spin-out rate is now very high. Yes. Um, yeah. And some of it's better than in the US in terms of dollars spent to, to yeah. produce outcomes. Um, we've got a world-leading capital market by any measure. Our yeah. trick, actually, is to make sure they're properly connected together. Yes. Yeah. I'd love your reflections on being part of that Cambridge ecosystem yes. in terms yeah. of what it's yeah. done yeah. for the company, but also what it might do for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And any reflections on that, bringing that ecosystem together yeah. point? Well, I think for us, we, we couldn't have done what we've done without being in Cambridge. Right. Maybe we could have done it in Oxford. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, we're very, uh, we have a lot of connections to, to the university. Our, our founder was a, a Cambridge academic. Mm -hmm. um, I would say a, a, a big percentage of our staff um, have been through Cambridge. They're, they're Cambridge graduates. Um, uh, in terms of our funding, actually, our, our funding was originally derived um, from Cambridge and Cambridge right. Angels. Right, yep. Um, there's a lot of uh, angels in, in Cambridge oh. because actually a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, having had some success, want to uh, give continue back to and give, yeah. and give back and, yeah. and invest in technologies that they're interested in and... and, and you know, the value there is not just the money, but also the mentoring, because they've been through a similar um, uh, process as, 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 as the one we're going through. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we were funded for many years by uh, a network of Cambridge Angels, mm -hmm. which then turned into a network of uh, London uh, Angels and investment right. bankers. And um, really for 20 years, we were funded in that way. We, right. we steered away from venture capital markets and, and other sources of uh, funding for many years. We, we had one particular investor, a guy called Stuart Newton. Uh, he was uh, the founder of Newton Asset Management. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, and he has been incredibly supportive uh, and, and invested for many years uh, in, in the business and, and brought with him a, a you know, a, a Part of that ecosystem. Of, yep. An ecosystem, yeah. Yep. Uh, more recently... Uh, just last year, in fact, we, we closed a big uh, venture capital round. Mm. Uh, there we had to hunt a bit wider, uh, not just wider than Cambridge, but actually wider than the UK. I'm very pleased that we've brought in some, some tier one VCs mm -hmm. um, in, in the last year. And yep. We've got Intel and uh, Sony Ventures and uh, Atlantic Bridge, and Supernova. So we, we've got a set of really good VCs. Um, and also institutions that are endorsing the very technology that you're you're driving as they're, well. They're endorsing the technology. Um, in, in the case of uh, Sony, Sony is um, 
arguably the dominant player in smartphone cameras yeah. because um, they, they supply you know, a very significant percentage of the world's image sensors, mm. one of the key components in the cameras. And you know, I think their investment um, is really forward looking and seeing where that market is developing mm -hmm. um, and seeing that with bigger image sensors and bigger lenses, uh, you're going to need different sorts of actuators to, to move those in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, and our technology has something like 10 times the force of the competing technology. Right. Right. So in so this world scale. where image sensors are getting bigger, lenses mm. are getting bigger, um, you've got more force needed to, to lift and move those, um, you know, that's, that's, that's a great direction for our technology. Yep. Yep. So where do you think the future lies? You've obviously had this investment and that's taking you on the next stage of your yeah. journey. So. What's your sense of, of how, how the next five years or so will go? Yeah, so, so the, big, um, the big change for us, uh, as I described, was this move in business model from mm. licensing to becoming a semiconductor selling company, yeah. a fabulous yeah. uh, semiconductor um, company. Um, and that change has meant that we've had to bring in new skills, mm -hmm. um, new people, new uh, engineering backgrounds. But the ambition for the company is, I mean, first of all, in smartphone cameras, we, you, you know, you, you mentioned the size of the market, it's enormous. Yeah. And we, we just, you know, we're just at the, the edge of it at the moment. So, you know, we believe that we uh, could and should be able to ship into all of the handset companies that, that, that yeah. we've mentioned um, uh, and in high volume. And so we want to really take a much bigger piece of, of that smartphone camera market mm -hmm and sell our chips yeah. uh, because that's actually quite trans transformational financially. We, we take a, something like six times the revenue um, that we did under right. the licensing okay. business model just by being able to sell the chip as well. Yeah. So, um, so we want to really you know, create a much bigger um, uh, role in, in, in the smartphone camera world. Um, and then we want to develop you know, some of these new applications and, and, and take them into market with, with partner companies um, I mentioned the insulin pump and yeah. the AR, VR. Um, imagine auto-focusing glasses where you don't have to go to the optician. You don't, know, need, you don't need the multiple on. versions of very focals that these are at the moment, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, how do you do that? You do with actuators. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there are just so many different applications mm -hmm. and, and we want to, you know, we want to um, uh, develop a number of those in, in addition to the uh, smartphone camera mm -hmm. uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to become profitable, we want to become cash generative. Uh, and you know, our view is once you've achieved that, then it opens up options. And yeah. you know, we're here in the London Stock Exchange and IPO becomes an option yeah. once, you, once you're in that position. So yeah. we've, we've got some steps to go to get there, but um, that's, that's the ambition. Yeah, and, and, and look, I think you're exactly the illustration of the thing when I get the opportunity as a platform to talk about is, is these wonderful things that we develop in the UK, sort of yeah. world leading science that we should be so proud of. Yeah, yeah, um, and the opportunity to scale it and grow it yeah. and keep it as a, yeah. as a great British, both innovation and champion, I think is something that we should all aspire yeah, to. That, absolutely, absolutely. Now, yeah. one, one final question, slightly personal one. The more you talk about this and the more I hear this, A, it's fascinating. And the opportunities are huge from insulin pumps to phones or whatever. Yeah. Is it exciting for you as a journey to go on? It, it, is, it is exciting. I mean, it's, it's a long journey. I've yeah. been in this company for over 20 years, yeah. which just, <laughs> I, I can't believe, you know, you, you go, crikey, I can't believe it's, it's been that long, but it, yeah. but it has been that long. But it's, yeah. it's exciting. It's, yeah. uh, we, we enjoy the journey. And uh, yeah. yeah, from a personal perspective, yeah, it's good. Well, I have to say it's shown. Um, oh, and I think it's, it's a remarkable story. I think an illustration of what we can do in this country and what is already being done, the great ecosystems we're creating. So thank you also for having, A, come into the exchange today, but also for everything you've done over the last 20 years to, to oh. create this company and, and do this. It's remarkable stuff. Thank and it's been you. a real pleasure. Thank yeah, you. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.